is John Rystrom, and my name is spelled J O H N R Y S T R O M, and I'm the manager of the Franklin Hotel in Deadwood. We, as a company, the Silverado bought the Franklin Hotel in 2005. We did an extensive renovation of the lobby area, expanded it, added some new openings, um, and reopened back up in 2006. The hotel consists of 67 rooms in the main hotel. We also own a small hotel right across the street, um, which we call the Franklin Motor Inn, which is 13 rooms, and we have a home, a small cottage, three bedroom house behind the hotel that we rent also. So, and it, we do have, we have everywhere from small standard rooms that are about 200 square feet that, you know, are comfortable for a couple and serve well enough for somebody that wants to sleep, has all the modern amenities, to we have three in-room suites that uh, have four beds in them and living rooms, living room areas, and some of them have kitchenettes, so we have a broad array of rooms that we do sell here. Well, my journey for the uh, Franklin Hotel started back in late 99, early 2000. Um, I worked for a management company out of Mitchell, uh, Midwest Hotels, and ended up building the Comfort Inn in town. And at that time, the Silverado was going through their expansion um, on, from the highway side of the Deadwood here. Or the convenience store. They did that expansion. Expansion at that point. Um, we own a not to jump around. We own a small piece of land up behind the lodge, which we were always going to build a resort up there. When Costner was doing his resort, we did plan a resort up there also. Um, that never came to fruition. So I was hired in 2000 to for, as a hotel guy for the Silverado and was hired to learn the casino side of the business. So I did that from 2000 to 2005 when we purchased the Franklin at the top of Maine here. And we expanded our casino and our operations into the hotel business here, which brings me to uh, where I am today. And the hotel has a lot of history. I'm very proud of it. We did some, ex we've done some remodeling, mostly in the lobby area. We plan to move into the rooms in the next year or so. Um, it's been a long time coming, and it will be uh, it will be a a crown jewel of Deadwood. I would like to say we already think it is. The hotel is um, it has a lot of history. We every so often add things. If you've uh, visited us, you'll notice that we do have Legends Restaurant in the lower level. It was actually um, TripAdvisor ranked number one steakhouse in the state. And Travel Channel was here this year and did a special on the restaurant. And the name legends came from all the people that have stayed at the Franklin Hotel over the years. We've had people from presidents to movie stars, John Wayne, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. The Kennedys still have a room named after them in the hotel. And we still see the nephews and younger generations of the Kennedys a lot of them who work for CNN right now will come um, every so often and request to stay in as they're traveling through the country. So that's where the uh, name for Legends came from. We've kept pretty much most of the existing namings on the rooms. Um, people always ask, is this where John Wayne stayed or is this where Willie Nelson stayed? It's not necessarily the exact same room, but it is the same. If these are all people, everybody that's named in the hotel has stayed here with the exception of Wild Bill. He obviously was was gone by the time they uh, started building the hotel. They uh, originally started building the hotel in the late 1800s. Um, it was, they started and got the foundation in and the people that were doing it went bankrupt. Therefore, in the uh, turn of the century, the foundation was here, and it's actually a spring that runs underneath the hotel. And for a few years, the kids of Deadwood used the foundation as a local swimming pool. They would go in and, and swim, swim down there. Um, the Franklin family um, spearheaded a movement in the 1902-1903 to finish the hotel. 
which took a they formed a business club throughout the with the city with the, the business leaders of the city and with their money and the business club were able to finish the hotel and from there on I like to say it's part of our history um, a lot of people have visited here a lot of people come to see us because of the people that have visited here um, we do have before we bought the property, there was a special on Unsolved Mysteries about our ghosts. People often wonder if we have ghosts. My, my story is always, you know, the more you drink, the more ghosts you see. It's, uh, I've never personally encountered anything. We do have a floor supervisor when we were shut down for remodeling that um, there was no power or and no water running to the building, but he because our insurance company required us to do a walkthrough um, every other hour, he would come over in the middle of the night and walk through, and he continually heard toilets flushing and things like that. So he quit coming into, into the building. And through the years, we've had everything from grown men sitting at the bottom of the stairs crying because they claim they've had ghosts uh, so-called messing with them, to um, people that are pretty confident on what they've seen as far as ghosts. We do have people that like to come in and stay here that investigate to the paranormal and things like that. We don't necessarily advertise that there is ghosts. We, I've never experienced anything. And we find that being a casino property, there's a lot of superstitious superstitions go with people that gamble. And it's not always a good thing to elaborate on what might or might not be happening upstairs. My name is Brenda Hedge, I'm Head of Housekeeping, and I have been here almost 25 years. Skeptic on the paranormal. I can usually explain things if a TV comes on automatically or whatever, I think it's probably been programmed ahead of time. Um, I've heard stories though, I've had guests stay here that have said, you know, they've been unpacking their suitcase and stuff started flying out. And we used to have a bellman here uh, years ago. He lived here. He lived on the second floor. And he said uh, on third floor he'd see an, a woman just about every night standing at, at the end by the window. So whether that has anything to do with anything or not, I don't know. Mary Hart has actually stayed in this room. Uh, a lot of other famous people have stayed here too. Leonard Skinner. Uh, Joan Jett's been on this floor. We've had a lot of famous people. Joan Jett, um, Chubby Checker stayed in 411. We've had Jan Dean, Jan and Dean. Uh, it's just been a lot of famous people. A writer actually for Kennedy stayed here for uh, one summer and worked out on the veranda on the bar. It's been a lot of years ago. But he schmoozed with them all. That's when all the famous people came pretty much was years ago. Bill Walsh, he knew a lot of people. I mean, these walls, if they could talk, they would tell some stories. So when we undertook the remodeling of the property, our biggest concern was not to ruin the history and the original uh, woodwork and everything at the hotel. So we went to great extent. We do have some some awards for our remodel projects um, in the in the hotel. When we redid the lobby, we added everything from where the blackjack pit back is all added on. And what we did is we took all the woodwork that was on the walls, took it down. Um, it was all links coated now, but we took all that down, and then when we got done remodeling, it all went back up around the outside. Um, so we did that. Then all the woodwork that you see on the front of the buildings, the columns, if you look at the period pictures, which throughout the hotel, upstairs and in the lobby area and in the casino, we have put different period pictures throughout the throughout the history of the hotel that were taken. And even as early as the 1920s, you'll see that there was a lot of woodwork that was painted over. So when we bought the property, there was literally an eighth inch of paint coating on all this woodwork. And we took the time to strip all that down to uh, the original woodwork, because we thought it was important to get it back to the original uh, wood. The front desk that used to sit right back here is actually the original, the, the front desk that you check into right now. We took the original front desk. It isn't a little bit smaller. We cut it down a little bit because they used to have, it used to be big enough to have the phone system in it and, and everything else. So 
Well, we did that, and the if you were here in the late 1990s, you would see that there is a small mosaic tile floor under that was underneath that was the floor. So what we did is it's cost prohibitive to actually to completely redo it. So what we did is we had a coating put over it, and it actually sits below us right now because we wanted to keep the original floor in here in case we ever did someday want to go back to go from the carpeting back to the basalt floor. Um, with the pretty pictures upstairs we do have littered throughout the building or set up throughout the building so you can kind of see the uh, the history of the hotel what it used to be like what it is today we do have um, we've had several uh, movies that have been um, filmed here. There's been other movies that have been filmed about the hotel. We've had several music videos done. Big and Rich did a music video from the veranda. I play guitar and I sing my songs in the sunshine. And that was a big hit. They were, people don't realize that Big and Rich were actually a house band out at the bodega in the late 90s and early 2000s before they got big and Deadwood was actually their stepping stone to Nashville and when they would when they would come to town and play they would always stay here at the Franklin so it was just a natural thing for us to name a room after them and for them to do the video um, here um, so that's part of the history also uh, a neat little tidbit that I like to tell everybody that when they come in the they look at the ceilings or in awe, and I let them know that these are the original ceilings. They are the three different rooms here have three different um, stamps in. They're all three different. And when we bought the property, there was some damage, some water damage that had happened over the hundred years, and some pieces that need to be replaced. So we started calling around to find out if there was companies that could actually fix this or come in and help us and guide us. And, we ended up calling a company in Kansas, and they got back to us and said, you know what, we were actually the original company that did the ceilings. And they called us and told us that they actually had the three original dies still in their warehouse that were, that were used in the early 1900s to stamp these ceilings. So what was neat is we took pictures of the pieces that we need, needed, and they actually stamped it into PVC and we just took it, painted it, and placed it right up. So we've taken a lot of care in trying to preserve the history of the property. You know, we like to look at it as an old girl and, and we're trying to keep her as, as original as possible, but yet the modern amenities that everybody would expect at a modern casino. So one of the uh, highlights of the property, as I was saying, the Big and Rich did a music video up on the veranda. That is our outside bar that's opened uh, seasonally, um, usually from Memorial Day to Labor Day or weather permitting as long after that as we can. Um, on the entrance to the veranda, there's what's called a painting room. And what that was is um, back in the early 1900s, ladies with their corsets would go in and rest in there and unhook their corsets so that they could get some air. Um, that's why, hence the fainting room, is a lot of times they, they did end up fainting there. Um, up there also is, when we bought the property, we bought it from Bill Walsh, which he actually was a, a one time a Catholic priest in Central South Dakota and ended up in Deadwood. and. He was married to a lady by the name of Joe Warbuck from Sears and Warbuck. So up in the fainting room, a connected room to that, the Emerald Room has an original uh, fireplace from Sears and Warbuck from the early 1900s. Um, also in that room, we do have some, we had, and they're actually in some lodging rooms right now, there was two identical hand-carved shrunks from the very and people have learned to have actually learned about these and sent people in just to see these things because they're uh, 
they're all handmade and it's they're very intricate and um, very nice to see. We do have a lot of antiques in the property. Some of them were obviously it's a big property and, and not of all of them are original to the property. We uh, we do have some video or some picture evidence of some semi trucks that came up in, in the mid '80s from down south with furnishings and antiques that were put in it. The property, even though it's been running non-stop with the exception of 2005 to 2006 when we did our remodeling, it's not always been a hotel. It was at one point apartments. That's why a lot of our suites are set up with kitchens and living rooms and, and bedrooms. Because at one point in time, there was pretty much all apartments in here. The, in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, we uh, had our last guest, and it was obviously before we owned it, um, moved out. And I have spoken with, their fam with her family several times, and we do have a, a room named after her. Also, it's been kind of an honor for me over the years to own the property. I still get things to this day. In fact, last year I got a letter from a gal in, I believe she was in Colorado Springs, who sent me some items that her great-grandfather was a bellman in the early 1900s in the, in, for the Franklin Hotel. And she actually sent me some letters that the manager at the time had given him as letters of reference for a new job. And with those letters, she also sent me his leather vest that he wore as a doorman. And we are hoping to incorporate some of these really unique items into the remodel when we um, do the remodel and try to pay homage to the, some of the history that way of the people that have lived here and worked here throughout the years. So those things I don't actively keep in guest rooms because they're actually so important to me that I do not want them damaged. You know, being a being a full service hotel, we do have, and Deadwood being what it is, you know, we're a, we're a little family mecca for vacations and parties, and we have Deadwood, we have New Year's Eve, we have all St. Patty's Day, all these special events, and a lot of the rooms have seen a lot of wear over the years from people, and, and we expect that. We, we want people to come to Deadwood to have a good time, and without that, we wouldn't be here. There's ongoing, I, I talk to people that leave for five years and come back and they say every five years this town reinvents itself and fixes and goes further in their investment into the future of the town and that's important to us. And that's why our ownership and uh, our partners have invested so much just on the top of Maine here. And that's what, that's kind of our, our whole block here is is the top of Maine and the, this is what we do and you know we we hope continued success for people coming to visit Deadwood and to visit us.